Hi, and welcome to Math 250. This video is on section 6.6, .6, symmetric matrices. Recall from chapter five that diagonalizing a matrix can be very helpful in finding a power of the matrix. We previously rewrote a matrix A as a product of an invertible matrix P and a diagonal matrix D along with P's inverse, um, mainly to be able to find powers of A. We worked with a formula that looked much like this, a to the m equals p times d to the m times p inverse to calculate large powers of a in a short amount of time. Recall that the columns of p formed a basis for Rn consisting of eigenvectors of a and that the diagonal entries of d consisted of the corresponding eigenvalues for each of those eigenvectors. So that was back in chapter 5. So now we're going to put a little twist on it. Suppose that the columns of P also form an orthonormal basis for Rn. That is, P is an orthogonal matrix. By theorem 6.9 that we did in um, the last section, uh, P transpose is equal to P inverse. That's a property of an orthogonal matrix. So therefore, if we take our formula from section 5.3, A equals PDP inverse, and we transpose both sides. Remember, transposing, you know, we, we, we switch the order. And also, because P transpose equals P inverse, we can make that substitution immediately and then apply the transpose to each of the terms inside, which switches the order in this step right here. Um, transposing a transpose is a complete undo operation. Um, D stays the same because, you know, those are just uh, eigenvalues along the diagonal and zeros elsewhere. So we get out PDP transpose. We can use theorem 6.9 once again to state that uh, P transpose equals P inverse. And what we end up with is matrix A. So through this, you know, and we've seen this proof type many times, through this sequence of substitutions and Working things out, we started with A transpose and we ended with A. And that's the definition of a symmetric matrix. A symmetric matrix is one where A transpose equals A. And that's the, the basis of what we're gonna talk about today. Um, the preceding calculation shows that if there is an orthonormal basis for Rn consisting of eigenvectors of a matrix, then that matrix must be symmetric. Um, the next result is useful in proving the converse. Theorem 6.14 states that if U and V are eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix that correspond to distinct eigenvalues, then U and V are orthogonal. So that allowed for some of those nice properties we used in, in the proof of that statement before. More generally speaking, um, we, can, we can switch things around a little bit. An n by n matrix A is symmetric if and only if there is an orthonormal basis for Rn consisting of eigenvectors of A. In this case, there exists an orthogonal matrix P and a diagonal matrix D such that P transpose AP equals D. So notice that D now is on the right-hand side and A is on the left. So if you want to compare it to our previous slide, um, we had a little switcheroo over here, and we switch out P inverse with P transpose, because if the matrices are orthogonal, um, then, then we, can, we can swap out uh, P inverse or P transpose. All right, so um, what does this all mean, and what can we do with it? Uh, we're going to take a matrix A, and we are going to orthogonally diagonalize the matrix. To orthogonally diagonalize matrix A, we go on a search of eigenvalues, corresponding eigenvectors, and then we will normalize the eigenvectors to create the matrix P. So the first thing we want to do is find the determinant of A minus T times I2. We want to figure out what those eigenvalues are. So to do that, um, I would just do uh, 1 minus t, 1 minus t, 2 and 2. So we take off t from um, each of the diagonal entries. To find the determinant, recall that we multiply um, this way, 1 minus t by 1 minus t, and then we subtract going this way. 
if I multiply this all out, I get um, t squared minus 2t plus 1 minus 4, which is the same thing as t squared minus 2, 3, 2t minus 3. Um, to find the eigenvalues, I want to set this equal to 0. So then um, that would involve some factoring. This factors into t minus 3, t plus 1. And that gives me out two values, t equals 3 and t equals negative 1. So these are our eigenvalues. So we'll, um, we'll keep track of those, keep them close by. So next, um, for the eigenvalue of 3, we go back to our, uh, our matrix and we calculate a minus 3 times i2. So we can um, come up with a corresponding eigenvector. So that means I shave 3 off of each of the diagonal entries. That gives me out um, negative 2, 2, 2, negative 2. Um, if you want to put that into RREF, I'll spare you the, the many minutes of uh, row operations, but the RREF for this turns out to be uh, 1, negative 1, 0, 0. When we talk about corresponding eigenvectors, um, we want to imagine that we're, we're then setting this equal to 0. So imagine that you're augmenting um, you know, another 0 column on. So this would mean like x1 minus x2 equals 0 or x1 equals x2. My pen wasn't writing so great. So with that said, a corresponding eigenvector, since x1 equals x2, we'll use uh, 1, 1 just to keep it simple. And then for um, the other eigenvalue of negative 1, we will then subtract um, a minus uh, negative 1 times i2, which means we're adding 1 onto each diagonal. So I add 1 to each of these ones. That gives me 2, 2, 2, 2, lots of 2s. Um, in a similar way, the RREF turns out to be 1, 1, 0, 0. And then to come up with that corresponding eigenvector, again, imagine you're augmenting on a column of zeros. This time it's x1 plus x2 equals 0. So the eigenvector there um, would be 1, negative 1, since um, we would be, when we solve for x1, we get out um, negative x2. So that could be our eigenvector there. So next we want to normalize each of the eigenvectors, which means we want to divide all the entries by the norm. Each of these has a norm of radical 2. Recall that to find the norm, we square each component, add them up. Um, so it's 1 squared plus 1 squared. It's a total of 2. Then take the square root. So our eigenvectors are um, 1 over radical 2, 1 over radical 2 and uh, 1 over radical 2, negative 1 over radical 2. So now we have our, our um, eigenvectors. So now finally, to orthogonally diagonalize this, we want to come up with a way to write this out so that P transpose times A times P equals um, D. So for um, matrix P, we simply take these two vectors and put them together into a, um, into a matrix. So I just take 1 over radical 2, 1 over radical 2, 1 over radical 2, and then negative 1 over radical 2. Matrix A, we just copy as is. That was given to us. And then P transpose, I take each of these columns, sorry, I take each of these rows and I write them as columns. The good news is that when I do that, um, the first row I write down as a column this way, and the second row I write this way. Um, they match exactly. And if you want to uh, work it out, it could be shown that this equals um, the diagonal matrix um, 3, 0, 0, negative 1, 
that contains the eigenvalues along the diagonal. So this is what it means to orthogonally diagonalize a matrix. A lot of um, computational work, but um, certainly very doable. For the next portion of our lesson, we will take a look at conic sections. Um, perhaps you've learned conic sections in pre-calculus or geometry. These are um, slices of a double nap cone. So it could be a parabola, a hyperbola, an ellipse, a circle, lots of different things. Um, generally with conic sections, I I'm assuming your experience with this so far has been um, writing them into a form that you can graph them in an XY plane. Most of the time, or if not all the time, you've probably worked with conics where uh, the major axis of the conic was parallel to um, either the X or the Y axis, um, like the images shown in the figure. So the first figure represents an ellipse that um, has the X axis as this major axis right here, and the Y axis is its uh, minor axis. The second graph is a graph of a hyperbola. And these graphs you've probably sketched many times. These happen when you have an x squared and a y squared, maybe an x term and a y term, some constants. Um, whether there's a plus or a minus before the y squared, that'll dictate what happens uh, to the graph and, and what it becomes classified as. But it's this term right here that can really throw a wrench into things. If you have x, y together in the equation for a conic section, the conic gets tilted a little bit. So when, when, when B is zero, when, when we don't have that term, we have nice conics that we know. But when B is, is uh, not zero, then um, the conics major axis will not be parallel to either the X or the Y axis. So the idea that we're gonna look at is using orthogonal and symmetric matrices, the topic of our lesson, to rotate the conic back to a place where the major axis is parallel to the x or the y axis. And to do it, we have to do a little bit of setup work ahead of time. So first, um, we're gonna define associated quadratic form to be ax squared plus 2bxy plus cy squared. We use 2b just for convenience, but, um, and, and I'll explain this in a moment. The idea is that we can rewrite the, the setup of a conic section through matrices. If I call matrix A, um, A, B, B, C, so the two by two matrix, and matrix V, um, X, Y, if I rewrite this out as V transpose times A times V again, when I multiply this all out, I will get this associated quadratic form. And you could check it if you like. This is one by two, two by two. So the first multiplication is a one by two matrix. I get out um, AX plus BY and then um, BX plus CY. And then that gets multiplied by XY, you know, this, for the second round of multiplication. Now I have, um, you know, now I can multiply it out that way and get what we see here, the AX squared plus BXY plus BX squared plus CY squared. Sorry, plus BXY, not BX squared, BXY plus CXY, and the two BXYs in the middle add up to 2BXY. All right, so um, th these problems are a, a little bit on the long side, so I thought I would just give you some intuition as to where um, this kind of comes from. So we had spoken about the fact that if we do have this B, if we do have an XY term in the middle, we'd like to rotate it back. Um, but the question is, how do we do that? Um, to do that, we find an orthonormal basis for R2 so that the corresponding um, X prime and Y prime axes to the basis are parallel to the axes of symmetry of the conic section. Because A is a symmetric matrix, it follows that there is an orthonormal basis, uh, B1, B2, 
for R2 consisting of eigenvectors of A. So that's like what we did in our last example. We came up with a, a matrix P consisting of um, eigenvectors um, that formed an orthonormal basis. Necessarily, one of the eigenvectors, uh, B1, B2, negative B1, negative B2, must lie in the first quadrant. Um, that is, both of its components must be positive. Since, since this vector is a unit vector, it has the form cosine theta sine theta. So essentially, we're taking out the first column of the rotation matrix to help us. This will be what helps us get the angle that we have to rotate the conic by to replace it back on an axis parallel to the x or y axis. Because the columns of P are eigenvectors of A, um, going back to our last example, we have this relationship and that the diagonal matrix has um, eigenvalues of, um, of the original matrix. We have, okay, so that's that. So if we look at um, P times the standard vector E1 and P times the standard vector of E2, if we rotate them by angle theta, um, we have this type of relationship here x equals cosine theta x prime minus sine theta y prime, y equals uh, sine theta x prime plus cosine theta y prime. So that just comes by multiplying the rotation matrix by um, x prime y prime on the right. So that's where, that's where that sub comes from. And then we can take our, our standard quadratic form here and as we showed before, we can rethink of this as vector V transpose times A times vector V. We can substitute in uh, P times V prime for each of the Vs since we're, we're rotating them back. And um, we can you know, use some properties, associated properties from earlier in the course to regroup. We have this um, P transpose times A times P that we showed before was equal to a diagonal matrix. And then um, since that diagonal matrix contains the, um, the eigenvalues of the original matrix, we can expand it out to look something like this. So all of this put together basically means that we can use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to help us uh, rotate a conic back to a nice place. That's what it means in English. <laughs> Um, but let's work through an example to see exactly what that looks like. So for our example, we are going to look at the equation x squared plus 6xy plus y squared minus 16 equals 0, which I've also graphed for you here on Desmos. I took a little screenshot. You can see it is a, um, a hyperbola that, that looks clearly tilted from what we're used to seeing. Um, we're going to find a symmetric matrix A for the associated quadratic form, and then we'll go through the whole process of finding the angle of rotation needed, and then um, the equation needed to, um, to graph us back to, um, to something more original. So first, let's come up with matrix A. Recall from our discussion before that it looks something like this, A, B, B, C. Again, it's symmetric because the rows can become columns. But also keep in mind, too, that the way your book defines the equation, it's ax squared plus 2bxy plus y squared. So our a is 1 and our c is 1. But for b, we actually use 3. We cut this middle number in half because it's 2bxy. So in other words, 2B matches where 6 is. So B would be 3 both times. So that's a, that gets cut in half. So that would answer part A. And then we can you know, write the variables out like we did before. And that would get us um, to the same spot. So um, once we have that, next we want to come up with the angle of rotation. In order to do that, we need to find a matrix P. So to find matrix P, um, I will tell you, obviously you want to work this out, um, but I already worked out something similar on the last problem. So I will tell you that A's eigenvalues
are four negative two. I might want to stop and, and double check that this is is correct for your own edification. And um, an orthonormal basis for A, again, we calculated all this for the last problem, but if you want to, um, if you want to try it out, an orthonormal basis would be uh, one over radical two, one over radical two, uh, negative one over radical two, one over radical two. So that would be very similar with subtracting each eigenvalue off the diagonal, putting it in REF, solving, and then dividing by the norm. In fact, these numbers look almost identical to the, the last one that we did. So our matrix P would be um, the collection of all of these in one two by two matrix. And like our last side mentioned, um, we wanna figure out the angle so it's best to, um, where was that noted? I think it was two slides ago. So we want to use, um, you know, we want to look at that first column where the entries are positive and, and solve it backwards. We had a one over radical two here, and then we had a one over radical two here. So we're going to solve for theta to figure out what to rotate by. So I have um, from this first entry, I have cosine of theta equals one over radical two. And uh, sine of theta equals one over radical two from the bottom. And in both cases, um, that is a 45 degree angle that we need to rotate by. So that gives us our, um, our first part there. So um, 45 degrees, thus, if we rotate x and y by 45 degrees, the uh, transformed equation is, and for this part, um, there, there's two steps here. So we want to first, um, rewrite it using our eigenvalues and x prime and y prime. So again, ax squared plus 2bxy plus cy squared, that can be rewritten using x prime and y prime along with the eigenvalues. So the first eigenvalue we found was 4. So I'll put that there, x prime squared. And then the second eigenvalue was negative 2. So I'll put that there. That'll be um, our y prime, and that equals 16. So I basically swapped out this whole first part with uh, a transformed version of the same exact problem, and I just moved the 16 over to the right. So that would be our transformed equation. To get it into a more graphable format, um, perhaps you re can recall from, from high school math, um, we want things to equal 1. So we're going to divide everything by 16. So our equation of the hyperbola would be x prime squared over 4 minus y prime squared over uh, 8 <laughs> equals 1. So the, the meaning of this is, um, if I actually graph this now, I'm not sure if you remember how to graph a polynomial by hand, but... If I go, um, I take the square root of the number under x, and that is 2. So I'm going to go 2 to the right and 2 to the left. And then for y, I take the square root of 8. That is a little bit more than 2. So I go up by a little bit more than 2, uh, probably closer to 3, and then down by the same amount. Um, so you make like a, a box there. You'll have your asymptotes and... Um, we can draw our, para our not parabola, we can draw a hyperbola. Since x came first, it'll open up on the x-axis, and it should look something like this. Um, I'm definitely not the best artist. But this is the effect of rotating this graph in red, the original, by 45 degrees, so that we can have it back to a place where the 
major and minor axes are parallel to the X and Y axes, which makes graphing a whole lot easier. Um, so that's an example of conic sections. Um, I should point out that the fact that we had this negative pop-up in the eigenvalue when we transformed it, that led to it being identified as a hyperbola. If that was a plus sign instead, this would have been an ellipse. Um, circles pop up when um, both eigenvalues are the same. All right, so the last part of this lesson is going to be on spectral decomposition. So our last topic will be spectral decomposition. And this is a, a pretty cool fact. Um, you can take any symmetric matrix and decompose it into a sum of much simpler matrices. And this comes from the fact that we can take our um, A equals PDP transpose representation of a symmetric matrix. We can rewrite the um, diagonal matrix as a, um, a set of vectors that are, are multiples of the standard vectors. And the multiples are uh, the eigenvalues times each standard vector. So that would keep zeros where we, where we don't, where we do want them and then um, other integers where we do want them, the eigenvalues. And then P transpose, we can just take P and, um, and transpose each of those um, individual entries. And through some manipulation and, and regrouping that we keep seeing in this course over and over again, um, we can simply rewrite this product after a couple of uh, regroupings as an eigenvalue times uh, U1, U1 transpose plus another eigenvalue times U2, U2 transpose, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what's funny is that um, each of these matrices has a rank of one. So we are essentially rewriting A as a sum of matrices, each with the rank of one. So I'll, I'll illustrate this out for you um, through an example. So here I just noted um, what the spectral decomposition is. Um, I just rewrote each U times U transpose as a matrix P. But here's a typical problem. Find the, um, find the spectral decomposition of 2, 3, 3, 2. So to do that, we first want to um, go through the whole motion of finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So again, like before, um, we want to find the determinant of a minus t times i2. So that would be um, 2 minus t, 2 minus t, 3, and 3. And then when we work that out, 2 minus t squared minus 9, you can distribute. These all kind of work out the same after a while. Um, so it's t squared minus 4t minus 5, and we set that equal to 0. That would be uh, t minus 5 and t plus 1. So we get out our um, eigenvalues of negative 1 and also positive 5. So just to save some time, um, to find the, the corresponding eigenvectors, um, I will write those out. So uh, for eigenvector u1, um, that would correspond to the, the negative one. That is the vector negative one over root two, and then one over root two, and then eigenvector u2. That corresponds to the eigenvalue of five. Um, this would be um, all positives with the same numbers. So now we can write, um, we can write a spectral decomposition as follows, we can say that matrix A is equal to um, lambda one, U one, U one transpose plus lambda two, uh, U two times U two transpose. So my eigenvalue of negative one, like I said, that gets multiplied by um, vector U, it's an, uh, negative one over radical two, one over radical two, and we multiply that by the transpose. So weird writing these sideways, <laughs> uh, one over root two. And then um, I add to it, uh, five is the second eigenvalue. 
So that gets multiplied by uh, 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2 times uh, 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2 when I transpose them. And then um, you can simply write these out as... Um, Let's see, so we have, uh, this is a, a two by one and then a one by two. So you get a two by two matrix from the first group. Um, and that would consist of um, the product of each of these. So I have negative one over root two times negative one over root two. That is a half. And then I can do the same thing over there. I'll get out a negative times a positive. So it's a negative on the bottom. Uh, a positive times a negative, and then on the bottom right, a positive times a positive. So there's our first uh, eigenvalue, and then we have like our our matrix P1 here, and then for the second one, my other eigenvalue was five, and I repeat the process. I go um, row by column here. Notice these are all positives, so every single entry is gonna be a half, uh, one over radical two times one over radical two. And this is um, this is a spectral decomposition. And just like when you learn partial fraction decomposition, LU decomposition, we're just taking something and writing it as a sum of things that are you know parts, so to speak. And those parts come from interesting places. Here it was eigenvalues and um, eigenvectors that were um, where we divided each one by its norm. So I hope this was helpful, and I will see you in class soon.